Now we move to the heart of this chapter, B4. The four equations of linear kinematics. Now these notes I'm going to show you I made back in 1978 when I first started teaching at UNC Asheville. I picked Asheville as the origin, the zero point for distances. We're going to measure from Asheville and we're going to go perfectly to the east. Now, Route 40 kind of does that, and we're going to pretend it does it precisely to the east. And then Raleigh is here. And the car, when you start the timer, say that we're going to start the timer at 12 o'clock noon, we'll call that zero, and then one hour, two hour, three hour. Let's say the car is on the shoulder of the road and it's just parked there. It's not doing anything. That's our first case. Case one is car at rest. Easiest case to consider. So if we go ahead and set that up and we make three graphs, the big three, we have the position as a function of time we have the velocity as a function of time and the acceleration as a function of time. Now the car is at a certain distance from Asheville, we call x sub zero, that's the time, or x naught, the time at noon, and it stays there. So this is a straight line, horizontal line, which goes on forever, all right? I'll just go ahead and stop it like at four o'clock or something in the afternoon there with the mark, but it, it would go on forever, assuming the car doesn't, doesn't move. And the equation of this line is x equals x naught. It's a constant. Now the velocity, see, is the slope of this graph, and we know that from common sense that the car is not moving. The car is going to be going at zero velocity, so V equals zero. The graph is a straight line, horizontal line, down here at V equals zero. And then for the acceleration, since the car is not changing its velocity, likewise is zero. So the equation is A equal to zero. So there are the three equations for the first case, simple case. Now we go on to a more general case, and that case is, go ahead and label these cases. This is case one, car at rest, and then case two is car with constant velocity. And we're going to want the three graphs again, so we go ahead and sketch the three graphs. So this is the position with respect to time, the velocity with respect to time, and the acceleration with respect to time. Now, since the car is going with a constant velocity, it's not accelerating, so we're going to consider this acceleration one first here. In fact, I'd rather write the T over here and just write the equation here. So let's call it, see, A equals zero. I'd like to write the equation underneath the graph. So A uh, versus T, and the equation is A, acceleration equals zero. Now, the velocity is constant, so here, let's say when we looked at 12 o'clock noon, the car was moving. So we go ahead and do that. The car is going to keep moving forever, technically, but let's just go ahead and cut it off, say, at like four hours, say one hour, two hour, three or four hours, and this is the initial velocity. So this graph is V equals V naught. We have two of the equations. Now to get this third equation, notice this, that the distance traveled is represented by the area 
under this graph. How do we know this? Well, let's go ahead and like take some numbers. Suppose the velocity here is two meters per second. And suppose we go for five seconds. Now I know I said hours before, but we're, we're gonna change it now to seconds and meters per second. So we know that the distance traveled by the units, if you take two meters per second and multiply by five seconds, the seconds will cancel and you get 10 meters. But see, this is five is your like length of this rectangle and the width of the rectangle is two. So this area represents 10 meters. That's kind of weird because area, you say, well, the net be an area is like square meters or something, you know, or, you know, that would, wouldn't be a distance, but it is because, see, this is not a distance. This is a time and this is a velocity. So when you use the units and do your multiplication, you get distance. So that is the distance in there. But neat thing about this is we can consider this as the V naught, and this is some general T, and then we'll get for this area in there, V naught T. But that's the distance you would travel in addition to the position that you are from Asheville. So remember, we start the car somewhere from Asheville at X naught, and the distance that's gonna be added to that is this V naught T. So the distance from Asheville is the initial position plus the velocity times the time, the, which is a constant. And this is an equation of a straight line, like in math class where you have Y equals MX plus B type of thing. And then the slope, see the slope is V naught and B is the intercept. It would be the y-intercept in algebra, but here it's an x-intercept because we're using x, you know, the x in the algebra now becomes a t. So that's a straight line that would go like this. So if you look at this and break it down to analyze it some more, you can see that the v naught t is this part here and this is the x naught. So we're showing you geometrically what these represent. The x naught is the go to this height, and then v naught t is the additional distance you're traveling from when you start watching, because you're already x naught. Remember, we had Asheville here. Asheville is our origin. That's where x is equal to zero, and we're gonna start at some position, x naught, and the car is moving at that position when you watch, say, at 12 noon, and then you get this additional V naught T. Say, this is the additional distance you travel. So this is nice. The X, which is up here, this total height is equal to X naught, your initial height, plus the distance that you travel due to the constant velocity. Nice thing about these equations is that if the velocity should become zero, then V equals zero, A is still equal to zero, and if V equals zero, then X equals X naught, and we recover the earlier, easier case. This is what I love about physics. One of the things I love about physics is that you can recover a simpler case from a more general formula when the parameters simplify, and say, for example, the V naught becomes zero. Now, the third case we're going to look at is a car with constant acceleration. That's the third case. And we go ahead and draw the three graphs. So we have X, T, V, T and A and T. Now, if the constant acceleration is not zero, then it's gonna be up here somewhere like this. So acceleration is not zero. Now, I'm not gonna call this A naught like I did because the convention is just to call it A. 
In other words, you could say A equals A naught, but in practice, they don't do that. They just say the acceleration's constant. It's simpler. We try to avoid subscripts unless we really need them, and we don't really need it, need it here. Now, if you have a constant case like this, remember the formula we did in the earlier class when you have constant acceleration, V is V naught plus AT. In fact, that's the same kind of thing here. If you have a V naught here, constant, you write X is X naught plus V naught T. So if I start here with the A and go from a straight line to the left, you see it's like an analogous situation as going from the velocity to the position. We're going from the acceleration to the velocity. And the reason why that works is because the X is dealt Whoops. The reason why that works is that the V is delta X delta T and the acceleration is delta V delta T. So there's this similarity. So the acceleration takes the delta V delta T and the V takes the delta X delta T. So this formula, anyway, we can pull this formula out from the previous class, uh, a section, a previous section we did this we talked about this in great detail. So that means if you go here at the V naught and go up like this, you get the similar graph as we, we got earlier. All right, we'll go ahead and cut that off like at four hours, say four hours for sake of discussion. And then to go to get the position function, we remember that the area under the velocity graph gives you the X. So we'll break this down into a rectangle and a triangle. So this is T in terms of this length here for the base of the triangle. And then this height here, in fact, similar idea here, X naught, V naught, T. We're gonna have here the V naught and the A times T. Just very, very, very similar that the velocity has two pieces. The, that's your height in this graph your V naught initial height plus the gain of velocity that you get by the acceleration. So, so this is, you can think of this as your constant initial condition plus the area, say of this graph, the area of this graph, this is T and this is A, this area is A times T. So that's up here, say the A times T, which we sit on top of the initial velocity. So we want the area, so the area here, this is V naught T to get you this area. And then this is the area of a triangle. Well, the triangle, you can think of this as a rectangle and take one half of that. So it's T times AT, take one half. Remember the formula for a triangle is one half the altitude times the base. So this is one half. If you multiply these together, you get AT squared. So that takes care of what's up in here. So when you go over to this graph, you got to remember that X naught is your initial starting place. So we have to write down the X naught first, plus then these two pieces, V naught T plus one half AT squared. And this is, an equation of a parabola. So this is gonna go something like, like that. Let's look at the reductions. If the acceleration is zero, then you get A is zero. This goes away, you get V is V naught. The A T squared goes away, you get X naught plus V naught T naught. Then if V naught is zero, you get this, you get that, and the acceleration is still zero. So see how, how nicely it, it breaks down. Now, we're not finished yet because, see, this equation here has no, well, before we do that, let's look at, let's look at the parameters. We have X, V, A, and T. So you have X, X, V, A, and T. Now your X naught and V naught are initial conditions. 
constants given in the problem, but the variables are X, V, A, and T. Here I have an X, I have an A and a T, but I have no V. If I look at this one, I have a V, I have an A and a T, I have no X. When we're getting ready to do homework problems, we like to have four equations, one with no V, one with no X, one with no A, one with no T. And that way we can be more, most powerful in solving equations. So they're the four basic kinematic equations. We got half of them done here. So now to get the one with no A, what I'm gonna do is a little trick. I'm going to look at this area and instead of using the area of a triangle plus the rectangle, I'm gonna use the area of a trapezoid because see this big height here is simply V. Say V is V naught plus AT, so that's V. So the trapezoid area is you take the average of these two legs there, and then you multiply by the base. So the average would be one half V naught plus V, V naught plus V, and it's, take the average, one half, and then I multiply by T. So if I do that, I get the area, and remember, I have to add the x naught, and that gets me an equivalent equation to this one because I, I figured out the area, instead of the having the area of the rectangle plus the area of the triangle, I have the area of the trapezoid, and I still have that x naught. So this equation here has no a. And the last thing to do is to find one that has no T. And the easiest way to do that is to just eliminate the T in this equation using this one. T is V minus V naught over A. So if I subtract the V naught, I get V minus V naught is AT and then divide by the A. And if that goes in here, you know, I don't like this. <laughs> Here's what I usually do. D is X minus X naught, where this is the distance, extra distance traveled. All right, so that's given by that area of that graph that we added, tacked on to the X naught. So I just, I just find this easier to write this down like this. So then I have one half, and I'm gonna write here V first and the V naught second. And then here, V minus V naught over the A. And remember in algebra, when you have the sum and the difference, what you get is V squared minus V naught squared. Say, so, uh, remember in algebra, A plus B and A minus B, this kind of thing. You get A squared minus B squared because the cross terms B times A and A times B with the minus sign and the plus sign can cancel out. So that's good to always remember that. That'll work it out. A squared minus AB, when you hit it with the A, distributive axiom, then you hit it with the B, you get BA minus B squared, these go, and you get the difference of the squares. Uh, I like to remember this formula by 2AD. I think this is cute in the form like this. And that's, that's my favorite way to remember the one that has no T. In fact, you can replace all of these other ones with the X minus X naught. That might even be easier where you come in here and say that D is just simply V naught T plus one half AT squared by subtracting the X naught from both sides of the equation. Remember that the D is X minus X naught. You pick whatever you like to help remember these equations. So that's it. We have the big four, the four equations of, of kinematics. Before we leave, though, let's point out that when we go to the right like this, we are looking at the slope because the velocity, see, this is the slope of this graph, delta x, delta t. 
you take the limit as it to go to zero. And then here, A is delta V delta T. So this is going to the right. You're getting the slopes. And when we go to the left, we're getting the areas. Remember this uh, area, AT, pops up up here. And then here we did areas to get there. So you're really understanding something very profound here that going to the right is differential calculus. You take the slope of this function, you get the derived function, the derivative, and you take the slope of this function, you get the derivative of that one, the slope function of the slope function. And then if you go to the left, you're doing areas, and that's integral calculus to calculate the areas. That's like the reverse of doing the slope calculation. Very, very profound stuff in calculus. And here in the notes, I'm showing you that if you take the derivative of, the, of this, you get the derivative of the constant is zero. The derivative here is just V naught, and the derivative there is you pull the two down, uh, two, t squared gives you know, 2t, and then they cancel, and you get, this is the velocity, v is v naught plus at. So that's going from here to here. And then if you do the derivative again, you would just pull out the a. And that's what this is, so you just the a. It's a constant, the acceleration is a. And then if you were to go the other way, like let's say you wanted to integrate this, if you integrate say a dt using calculus, you would get a t, and then you would add a constant, and that's your v naught, your initial, you know, your your basic con condition, initial condition when uh, the velocity. So that's integral calculus, and then if you integrate this one, you get v naught t, and you get here a t squared over two. So if you integrate from zero to t like this, that's going to be one half a t squared. So this is not that important for us right now because we will you know, not be needing that, but calculus is a co-requisite and we wanna make connections uh, with calculus and, and the physics. But we derived all these equations without calculus. They were the kinematic equations and I'm gonna to continue to derive as much as I can in this course without calculus, but do reflect on this it's possible you didn't get to integral calculus yet because that's calculus two, so I'm not gonna dwell on this. You don't need it. We got the equations. We're basically finished. I'm happy if you just know that when you go to the right, you're taking the slopes, and when you go to the left, you're taking the areas. That's the main idea at this point.